Hello everybody and welcome once again to Pneumatic After Pressurized for Minecraft 115. Today we are going to look at some more programming. This time we're going to look at variables. So let's get started. So right, oh, before I forget, I was having difficulty with this memory stick, wasn't I? I was trying to get it turned on. So now you can see the XP orb auto absorb is on. And the way I did it is I just left click a block and I think that turns it on as on shift left click it it's still on <laughs> I don't know how I changed this I'll be honest with you maybe it was a different oh there you go and vertical block it turns it on and off as you can see I don't think that's quite as designed but never mind we have figured it out so we've now got auto absorb off let's just turn it on so oops wrong way around <laughs> auto absorb on that's the one I wanted isn't it so we can then move that out of our hotbar. I think everything will be fine. So now, I'd like to look at programming with variables. So we'll develop a quick program, and what we're going to do is set a, a global variable. We're going to use the remote for doing that. And all we're going to do here is we're going to write a quick program, and all it's going to do is update a sign uh, with the value of the variable. So let's put in the standard the standard build stuff that we need to get on with. So, so, so the first thing we'd like to do is press um, have a shutdown piece. Oh, standby piece it's called, isn't it? Yep. Like that. And then we're going to do an edit sign uh, piece. And <laughs> in fact, you could even take any part of the word that you've got there, like this. And we're going to set. I need, do need to get something else out of here. I think I need to get the coordinate piece. Now the coordinate piece is this one here: item assignment settings variable. So you can have this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign a variable. In fact, we don't need to assign a variable, do we? I think all we need to do is come along here and update the variable. And yes, that's right. We just update the variable. Okay. So we have to put down a sign and we have to place the sign. I think that I've got with me... Um, <laughs> that was a long drop, wasn't it? I've got the remote. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. And I've got a sign. Um, we just need to put the placement of the sign. I think I have a GPS tool in here too. I do good. In fact, I'll do it like this, yeah. So let's just place the sign down here. And do nothing with it. So what we're then going to do is to set up a variable. Some strange noises in Minecraft sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, update this text with the value of a variable. And if I remember right, thing, what you have to do is you have to do an open brace and then a hash and then the variable name. So the variable, oh, I think it's a dollar actually. A dollar, not that one, that one. Open brace and then the, va the valuable name. So we'll, we'll call this one um, state like this and I think that's all we need to do with this one and then we just have to specify the text that we're going to do so we just take the um, the sign here and so it's already highlighted in the block so let's just uh, left and right click shift right click this so you have to get it in its place and then you can put this onto here like this you'll notice I didn't bother putting it too near because it didn't link in so now that program is actually done um, and so it should work. I mean, so let's just take this out and bring the drone down here and then just put it down. So it'll just go to sleep and it'll just simply update the value of this sign. So um, it's got like that, like that. So it's yes, that's working. So you can see it's got zero, zero, zero here as three variables and it's gone to sleep. Great, perfect. So now we're going to have a look at the remote. Now the remote's really powerful. So you just right click it and you'll see this. In fact, I would like to have a filter in it so we don't have so much, we can't see so much. But that doesn't edit it, so we have to edit it, edit the sign first of all. So what you have to do is shift and right click it, and then you've got this editing thing in here like this. So you have four different types of fields you can put onto the remote. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a button on the remote, just drag it along here like this. And it snaps the grid as you can see. It updates this one here like that. And then we're going to put a label beside it. So, and that's all we're going to do for this one. Well, maybe we'll just have a, uh, another button in here. 
because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this the button into two different states so let's now edit this button by right clicking it and here we then we've got the text so what we're going to do here is um, let's set the state to running so we'll say run okay and the tool table the tool tip we can give it a tool tip we can say start the program Like this and then we have a variable name so the variable name as you see it's got a hash in front of it and that means that's the global variable so we can say state is this one and then we can set the values so we'll just set the values to say one here for the y coordinate which is a probably an unlikely variable to ever exist an unlikely coordinate to exist because bedrock normally starts a little bit higher than that okay and then it's got an enabling variable in here. We don't care about that one to start with. But what we will do is we'll enable the the other button based on this one. In fact, yes, we could even specify enabling variable. And I suppose, yes. Uh, yes, I suppose that's a good one, actually. We can put state in here like this. I'm not 100% sure about this, I'll be honest. And that's 0, 0, 0, which is what it is at the current time. Okay, so then we'll have a button here and we'll say stop. This one's going to be run and stop. You can see what I'm doing, can't you? So we can say stop the program. Or maybe even, yes. And then we can give it the variable name, state. And the state is going to be this one. And the enabling variable here is going to be state. And this is the value 1, like this. OK, so when this variable here has got the state 0, 1, 0, which it has from when you click the Run button, this is going to be enabled. In fact, I think we can actually overlay the two buttons. We'll see in a second, like that. And then we'll just do this one here. We'll just say a label, and we'll just give it this one um, running. We'll tell it it's running when this variable state is actually set to 0, 1, 0, like that. Um, tooltip we can say as a tooltip we can say um, sh show the state like that so that's it that's all we need to do so now we can right click this here and we should be able to change this variable to run it and you see it's running and it says running and the stop comes up here so you can see this variable is now 0, 1, 0 yeah, it's very straightforward really stop that hides it so of course we can then change the remote shift click it we can actually drop drop stop and start onto each other like that and then we can save it and we can right click it run it and stop it you see like that pretty neat really you can also use a checkbox for doing exactly the same thing so look at that this is a checkbox here let's put this down here and we can call this one run as well The tool tip is run the program when checked and the variable name is state that's already set so you can already set it up and we don't need to enable the variable in this one it's always going to be on and off so let's click that off now and then cl right click this one and just can i do this yes i've got to exit and now right click it to run that disappears so it means it's running and stop it like that <laughs> and then stop you see that's actually stopping it's running i think maybe i've got something wrong there because it's yeah that's right running so let's have a look at this now over here when we oops, don't want to do that let's just press the button here and i'll put run you'll see this variable here gets set to one stop it goes back to zero run it from here and this time the variable oh did i get that wrong it's got one zero zero so let's have a look at this maybe i messed that up a bit Ah, do you know, I think that's something completely different. I think that's just an offset in that case. So the checkbox doesn't act like the button does. So we don't want that then. We'll just delete this. We'll just drag it off the, 
off the remote and save it and then it disappears altogether now i've got no i've got no buttons running because it's actually in a funny state um ha <laughs> ha how do i get that back again uh without any buttons i'll probably have to shift click it and then run the stop disable the stop button here so it's always visible in fact we can do a, a reset on this one let's put this as a one here then it'll be enabled so we can then say stop okay now it disappears <laughs> and this should now be zero 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 good so let's go back and edit this <clears throat> didn't expect it to behave like quite like that so i want this is enabled when it's zero 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 actually it's when it's zero one zero is when it's enabled isn't it for this oh that's the run button okay that's the run button so it's enabled when it's zero 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 and the stop button because i put it on top you can't get to it so you have to do it this way then you have to do it like that so that's now correct so you can put them back on top of it so you see you have a choice really you could in fact um do it like this and then maybe we can change this text now you can't set the text to being in the middle of those things so we then got it run it running stop stop it as simple as that have a look on the oh, have a look over here and see what it does when you're doing that that gets set in the middle and then it goes off in the after, afterwards so that's just fine so we can control a program with that i'm saying it's not, i'm just having a look around it's night time but there doesn't seem to be too much too many mobs around at the moment so it's reasonably quiet so now let's go and do something with this having just said that you'll see he's starting to shoot a zombie over there all right i'll tell you what i'll be back in a second well that was funny in fact you'll see that you'll see that the, the drone just shooting these guys at the moment and they're getting put in flown up into the air fantastic <laughs> i didn't also expect quite as much destruction as that let's just turn on my magnet and disable it again right back to this program now so what i want to do is when this is turn when we turn this drone on here we would like to start the process of making some plastic now the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to check whether or not this um the thermo pneumatic processing plant has actually got enough information enough stuff in it so we need to check whether this has got a at least one bucket of molten plastic so let's do that let's put this into the program Just like this and what we can do with this is we can say um molten plastic so let's set the coordinates with the with the gps tool i think i missed it there all right so that's the coordinates of this so now we need to come along here and program that bit into the information into this to this program so we'll leave this here we'll leave the sign updating as it is and we can use other variables in here so the next thing we're going to do is we would like to check for this sign so let's have a look at the sign in here so let's press tab um so what we would like to do is to check whether a particular thing has got enough fluid in it so it's very much like checking for the items so the the one we're looking for in this case is um ah can't remember let's try fluid in here there we go so this one is going to check an inventory for fluid so and this one here checks whether the drone has got the fluid well we're not using the drone to transport the fluid just yet so we'll come along here like that and then you have this piece here the fluid the fluid piece here so we can possibly come along here and then right click this and say what we're looking for so in this case we want molten plastic okay and then we're going to come along here and then put in the piece for the sign like that and then we have the conditions so this is where it's going to check for we can always double check that of course by this time it works if you right click this and preview the area you should see the yes it is you can see now the inventory of the um processing plant is uh, highlighted which is great turn off again in fact as you could just see it in the top of the screen there couldn't you when you click this like that so you can see where it is 
So if this is the case, then we can actually do something with it. So right, let's get a piece out of here. We need the text piece, of course, to do to do the variable, and then then it's going to highlight this, and it's going to be okay. So what we're going to say is we're going to say have fluid in here. Has fluid plastic like that. So that's going to be the label here. So if it doesn't have any plastic, it just goes around the loop again here. And then we can say, um, we could possibly set a variable, depending on whether it's got plastic in it or not. So anyway, let's do this. So we need a jump piece. Um, this will jump out of here. And then we need, yes, we need the jump piece, don't we? So tap, in fact, the one we need is the, the label piece. That's right. And then we can drag this one with the middle button and put it onto here like that. So that's now correct, and it's actually still got an error because there's nothing connected to the bottom. So this time we're going to set a another variable up, and this time we're going to say um, assignment variable. I, th I think this is the one we want to use. Okay, so the variable is empty, so we have to give this a variable name. So we'll say fluid and um, plastic. In fact, I haven't done this completely correct because one's not enough. We have to check for a bucket of this, don't we? Uh, so we have to check for 1,000. So it's got a bucket of um, fluid in there. I forgot, to, I forgot to do that. So if it has got a bucket of fluid, it's going to go up here and then we're going to set a variable. So we're going to set the variable plastic and we're going to give the variable a name. We have to give the variable an, uh, a value as well. Now to do that, we need a because I've got the right piece here. Oh, that's an item assignment. Sorry, I've got the wrong one. I need the this one, the coordinate operator. These ones are um, slightly different. Get rid of that. Uh, you can't use those quite in the same way here. So we'll have a coordinate operator, and this time we're going to set the, a, another value. The variable name we're going to use in this one is going to be plastic, like this. and we are going to give it a value so this is what we need to do this we need to put a a coordinate piece into this now here it's giving you a warning it says no coordinate specified if you're using this to set a variable to zero 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 you can use an empty coordinate operator this one here without the widget so we don't want to do that we would like to set it to a, var a value so again we'll use the y of one it doesn't matter in fact we could actually do it like this I think that'll be sensible. So it's going to set this variable here, plastic, to the value of one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a second line here with the with the text. So what I'm going to do is simply grab this text and put it down like this, and then change this variable. So this time it's not a, a global variable, so we can remove the hash. And so we're going to say plastic. Okay. So this is setting the value of, of plastic. So, but of course we haven't initialized the value of plastic. So that should be zero, 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 like this. In fact, I think that's all we need to do for now. So let's just see if this works. Okay, now we reprogram the drone. like that so we can then put the, the the drone down here so you see that we've now got two variables and the second one has been set to 111 so that means if we come back down here that it has got plastic in it so we could then do a false condition couldn't we so we've got no plastic so let's just drag this across there like that and all we're going to do with no plastic is we're going to say um which is going to set the variable to a different value. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a jump. But we're going to do exactly the same as this, like this. And in fact, they're going to just put an M. I don't even need to specify coordinate operator in here. Let's do it like this. Okay. Because we're going to set it back to zero if it's got no plastic in here. Now, <laughs> that's actually a little bit more complicated. What I have to do then is to get the drone again. Put 
put it in and reprogram it. In fact, in this case, it might be more sense on this one is to press R to automatically, and it says it's another need another four pieces. So or press R when you insert the item. So it's going to automatically program it as soon as we insert it. That should be safe, but I have to watch out for that one. So now the drone is programmed. So we can put it down like this. Okay, and as you can, as you can see, this is that. We can turn it. We can press the run button on here like that. And it's running, so you get the one in the middle. Stop it again. Okay, and it stopped. We aren't doing using this condition yet. We should use this condition as well, of course. That's the next thing to do on this. But let's just see what happens if we remove from here the plastic. Um, I would like a small tank. I'll just get a small tank and come back in a second. So I've got a couple of small tanks and right click this like that and take out the molten plastic and then this variable at the bottom should then be changed to zero 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 if <laughs> it's working and it's not working why not let's have a look at the program so we need to get the debugging on it I should have the entity debugger is turned off I think let's just turn it on and if I can highlight this one here I can and let's look at the drone debugger here and see what it's doing so it's oh i've obviously not programmed it because i haven't got the other part of the program yes you probably noticed that so let's just break it pick it up and then we just need to put it into the controller uh, programmer this time and we've got to be careful what i use of course see i was missing this bit in here so i just put it in uh drone we can just take it out again like that and then we can put it down and as soon as we put it down this should get changed to zero 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 as you can see because it's got no plastic in there anymore so i think that's a good a good start to this program the next thing we're going to do if it has got fluid is we're going to make the drone pick some fluid up and then we've got to put the fluid into this inventory here um and i'm not sure whether or not i have to use a bucket for doing that or not i'll have a quick check and come back in a second in fact, let's just test it so ourselves. So, so the case is we have got plastic here. So I'm going to leave this bit of code, in, this bit of code in here, as it were, these plate, these puzzle pieces, so we can see what's going to happen. So now we're going to see if it has got plastic. We're going to pick it up a bucket of plastic. In fact, what we might as well do is let's just see if we can import plastic in here. So we need fluid again. Oh, we need to press tab, don't I? Uh, I didn't press tap because I'm in the wrong place. So we can import fluid. That's export fluid. We actually want both. So we want to take one of those. And then we can also have a look at the the export fluid. So we're going to import fluid from the, the tank that we've got. In fact, it, it doesn't matter. We don't need to use this because that's the only thing we can do. So let's just go and um, get these coordinates out of here. In fact, yes, I don't need to do that because I've got them already from the other one. But let's, we're going to put them into this one, so this chest here. So let's just set that one up. Now, in that case, you do have to press both. So we know from here, this coordinate, that we have got a bucket of plastic. So we'll simply drag it across like this, and then that should be OK. So then we want to go along here, and we want to export this bucket of plastic. But I think we can say how much we want to do, 1,000 this and we want to export this bucket of plastic into this chest so like this like that and then that would then repeat now I actually don't want this to repeat I would only like this to happen one at a time but what I'd like to do is to check the temperature of the chest we're going to put it into if this if this one here is not cold enough here then there's no point in actually um getting the drone to put the fluid in because it's not going to work so what so what we need to do is we could either do two things one thing i'll do later we'll activate and deactivate this cooling so we're basically going to activate the vortex tube by turning on this lever but first of all we're going to just um come along here I would actually need a bucket of fluid in here and I want to do this 
I'm going to get a lot of lag. But so uh, I'm a bit, it's a bit of a pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how we get, find out how much um, temperature is in this chest. And the way we do that is with a universal sensor. So let's go and get a universal sensor, and I'll be back in a second with the universal sensor. So the recipe for a, a universal sensor is one seismic sensor, plus four pieces of plastic, a resin repeater, and a pressure tube, not too expensive. And this one is relatively straightforward too, just a note block, a redstone repeater and a redstone torch, and four pieces of glass. And this one is just uh, one redstone with some planks around it. So that will, is what we can do with this. Now what we can do is we can put it down, and it doesn't matter where we put it down. I'm going to put it down here, like that. It links into this one here, and you'll see it's got normal. But when you click on it, it's got nothing. You can't do anything with it. So you need three upgrades in here to start, or one of the three. So if, for example, you could do a dispenser here like this. Uh, if I put this on the wrong place, I put that in there, then we have a look at what you can do with a dispenser. So you can check for... It can do things like emit a redstone signal when a particular value has been set. Um, a constant. But you can then specify where it's got to be. Well, that's in the world here. You can say, all right, you can say you can have a global variable in here. So, for example, we can have a global variable. We know the one we want to use is a state, like this. And then we have to specify... Actually, just that one, I think. Is it not showing me that I can't set the value on it? Let's just. Well, what we can do, of course, is to put a piece of red centers down here, which I don't have any of in my uh, inventory. I wonder if there's a piece in here. No, there isn't. We'll just get some from, uh, from here. Just get a stack of that and then turn, just turn this into. Uh, some redstone let's have a look at the uses of that it's the easiest way and then we just have a put the 32 in here and leave the other ones up there. so we could put a piece of redstone dust just here we could do all sorts of things of course we could put in um we could put it uh anything you want in here so let's have a look state i think it might be a global variable let's just see if it works so at the moment, it's global variables probably off. Let's have a look. Can you run it? So now it's running, which means that the global variable's on. Uh, okay, so that's not working. Let's just put in... Should work, actually, saying that. But I don't know what the value is supposed to be. Let's have a look. If I put in that. Does that work? No. Okay. It might be that this is linked to um, a different type of variable. Because that would then be set. We can double check this, of course. We go back over here and have a look at the side. So we should have one, a one in the middle of it. It does, fantastic. Um, but maybe let's do another one. Let's put this checkbox down here this time. And just all we're going to say here is we we'll give it another another variable name. We'll just say um, check. Okay. Um, we don't care what it's enabled to being like this so we can then run click this one and then we've got this variable set so now we could probably come along here and just put in the word check oops spell it right of course that's not working maybe you just need the because it's a global variable probably don't need to specify that and sure enough that's on so we can now right click this again and turn it off again as you can see. So you can do all sorts of things with this. These are universal sensors. I can probably spend the whole episode describing these things. But for now, I'll remove this one. We don't want that. What we do want to do is we want to check the heat. Um, and I've forgotten something else. <laughs> what I need to do is check the heat of this block here. So let's go back. I need, um, I need What I need to do for that is I need another GPS tool. And I've got a feeling... I haven't got any with me and I, I've got some made already prepared and I don't think I've got the chests with me. I haven't. I'll be back in a second with those bits. So now I have a couple of GPS tools and what I'm going to do with this is just simply select this point. 
You could use an area tool, but it's a lot cheaper not to do that. So I'll just simply right click this one like that. So that's now set to this point here. So we're going to check the temperature in here. Now the way you do that is we need to put this point we're going to look at in here. So we'll put, shift click that into there like this. This obviously the dispenser upgrade is not appropriate for this one. What we need is a block upgrade. Um, and I need to come out of global variables of course. In fact let's right click that again. It should be able to go through. <laughs> it doesn't quite reset itself. Let's come out of that. Now put one of these in. How many have to go back? Oh yes, of course, right. Okay, I didn't go back far enough. So here we have the, the block thing, and we can have a look at a, a block, and we can say heat here. So what we're going to look for is a temperature which is more than uh, 100 minus 100, and when it is, we're going to set the redstone signal on here. In fact, I'll put down the redstone signal here as well. What I'll probably do is put down a redstone block. So this is now true, as you can see. And what we can then do is we can come use that here. And we can say this one here. So what we need to say is when it's off. So let's come along here and put in the redstone check that we need. All we have to do to do that is possibly come along here here so before we check the plastic okay like this we're going to put another check in for the redstone signal so let's press tab on this one like this okay so we've got this one here the condition and the condition is testing for a location okay we haven't set the location yet we'll do that and then it has a jump and what we can do again is we can do we the false condition here is the one we're actually interested in. Um, <clears throat> I need to probably come along here. So we're going to do a little duplicate of this this area here. And what we're going to say is we're going to say um, use another variable here. This time we're going to use another variable. What's all we're going to do with this one is we're going to say um, I've got no plastic at the moment. So we'll say um, cut. What should we say with this one? too hot possibly let's call it too hot like that and then we need to specify which place we haven't done that yet let's come along here with the with the GPS tool and simply we can right click this one and shift left like that so that's the place for that one so the one we want is now this place okay so what if it's too hot is this side here so if it's true it's too hot okay so it goes over here and should set the variable for this one in fact if we bring this up here like that we did get less cross lines which looks better doesn't it anyway okay and then we can actually update the very a variable here so this time we're going to give this one um temperature let's, say, let's call it cooling like that so this is the variable for cooling and oh yes there's the drone just jumping around here i need to jump into this one here so when it's cold enough so this is the, this is the, then it's cold okay or cold enough so we'll just basically bring another text label down from here like this and say um i yes, said cold enough cold okay cold will do fine and we can put this one on this one side like this and say it's false so now again we can use a variable just like we've done it here and put it in and we're going to put it in this one as we're going to say um, another variable this time we're going to use cooling aren't we so let's take the cooling variable over here and then set this cooling variable to the same value as this one like that and then we can put this on to here like that so you can see that if it's cold enough it comes here if it's too hot it goes there resets the variable to zero so let's just have a look and see how this works I have to remember not to, to click it with the pneumatic wrench in your hand which is dead easy to do like that so that's now programmed as you can see it's got uh, 33 pieces required I got lots of pieces I've been trading lots and lots of times but with villagers and resetting their stuff like that. So this time, did I put it on the 
I didn't do, did I? I need to duplicate this one here. We'll just have a call it cooling. And we'll know that this is going to work because you'll get a third line on this sign. Like that. Okay, so now we just put the drone back into the put the drone back in. Did I put it down? Didn't did I? So it should say thirty four pieces required. I can't see it. <laughs> oh yes, press shift on it. It did show me when I press shift. In fact, I just saw it say thirty four pieces required. Good. So we just put the drone down now, and we should get our third line. So the, the third line here is zero 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 which means that this is too hot. This piece is too hot. As you can see that's on. Let's make sure it's cold enough by turning this on here like that. And that'll start to cool this down here. And the temperature at the moment is minus seven. We also need to turn this on here to make sure we've got some plastic in here. Otherwise it won't work anyway. So I think We'll wait till we get about one bucket's worth of plastic in here. It should just automatically click through like this. And it will do one bucket of plastic. So we can then turn that off. Look at this one here. You'll notice the temperature of this, oops, don't need to click it door, is 84. So as soon as that goes to minus 100, this should go off. And in fact, you'll notice that 96, 97, 90, 100, like this. And that's gone off. And this should now be set to on here. Perfect, you see, just as you're supposed to do it. So now the drone can then go off and do its plastic business. In fact, did it work even? It did work. Look, we've got two pieces of plastic in here. The temperature here is minus 126. And the temperature here, uh, I mean, how much have we got in? I can't see for drying. So Why can't I click it? Oh, because the drone's sitting on top of it. Why is the drone sitting on <laughs> Right, try to the side here. So we've got plenty of plastic in here now. I'm actually not sure why the drone is sitting here, because it should have enough. So let's have a look at the drone again, get the debugger out on it. So it's going down here. In fact, I'll just follow Active Widget until we get to the, to the bit so we can see the whole screen like this. No blocks can be interacted with. Side is up using count is 1000. I'm not sure what's going on here. Let's just take this another small tank here. Because this one's got plastic in it already. And then let's right click this drone. It should have worked. It's also looking a bit low anyway. So let's just right click it. Sure enough, we've got in here two buckets of molten plastic. Now, it was only supposed to take one bucket of molten plastic. Um, so there's something wrong with the program. But we're going to fix that next time. Well, that's it for this episode. As you can see, night time is coming. Um, next time, we shall carry on with this program because it's going to be quite a large one by the time we've finished. So until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.